All right. So welcome to the podcast of Sports, Music, and Cars. My name is Steve, and my partner's name is Marco. He's a big-time gamer yeah. over there, and he's got everything going. He's partner. got a professional setup. <laughs> partner. Yeah. Partner. Yeah. So what was the topic I was supposed to talk about? I forgot already. <laughs> the The bridge falling. Oh, we were going to talk about the bridge, and then we we're yeah. going to talk about maybe Mike, Ty- Mike Tyson fighting Jake Paul or something. And speaking of the Paul brothers, Logan Paul has his energy drink that he's lent his name to, his celebrity status to, and it's called Prime. And I was at Dollar Tree today, and they literally, there's like five shelves of energy drinks going from the floor all the way up to the top. And the middle three are all Prime. So this dude has like, 50, more than 50% of his space for the energy drinks over at Dollar Tree. He's got prime in like, you know, green and orange and had like a red, white, and blue and, and a raspberry. I mean, it's like five or six different flavors. And if you read the ingredients, it's all the same. It's all the same ingredients as every other energy drink. He just managed to put his name on it. And I think he went ahead and signed some, signed some deal with Dazen or Boxing or something like that to help promote that energy drink. So... It's not just it's not just him. It's also another uh, person called KSI. Well, that's like the, the stage name. I've YouTuber heard. Name. You're right, I've heard that person. That's that's another YouTuber, right? Yeah, in uh, in Britain. Right, I've heard of that person. Right, so mm-hmm. they're they're putting their name to these products that are the same as every other product out there. So, what are you gonna do? And to that end, then his brother is gonna be fighting um, Mike Tyson another month or so or something like that i mean when they fight tyson's going to be 58 and paul is going to be 28 paul is 6 1 apparently weighs about 200 pounds or something like that doesn't have a lot of body fat and tyson's probably about down to 5 9 at this point his body fat percentage is looking pretty good obviously if mike tyson connects he's going to knock paul's head completely off his shoulders but uh rock him sock him style but um paul's got that reach so I think it's going to be more of an exhibition. They're going to have a gentleman's agreement where they're not going to try to beat the crap out of each other. And, um, yeah, I don't – Tyson is going to try to get in, and he's going to do his little head movements, and he's going to bob, and he's going to jump down, and he's going to do all this, and he's going to fight short so that way he can pop up and get tall. And Paul's just going to kind of put his hand out there to jab and kind of put him down like this. And you might even see Paul opening up his fist and kind of putting his hand on top of Tyson's head to hold Tyson – because when Tyson comes in, he's going to be really low, and he's going to try to jump up and crack and crack Paul like this, like he always does when he spins his hips and his feet. And then Paul's going to wind up putting like putting his, literally putting his paw on top of Tyson's head to hold him down to keep him from doing that. So I wonder if the ref is going to is going to like you know give Paul a, a a card or whatever it is, a warning or something, say hey you can't you know you can't hold him down by the top of his head when he's trying to come up like that because I don't know if Paul's going to know how to get out of the way. Obviously, you have to go away from the punch. So if the punch is coming this way, you want to go this way in a circle, you know, not not going into it. Otherwise, he's going to get completely knocked out if he does that. So I don't know. If it's an exhibition, who knows what's going to happen. If it's a real fight, if Tyson doesn't knock him out in the first three rounds, I think Tyson's going to gas and Paul's going to use that jab and use his paws to hold him up, push him apart and, and maybe get in a couple of jabs and then Tyson will get frustrated. And who knows? Tyson might get knocked down. Who knows? But it's kind of ridiculous because then if Paul does win the fight, you know, then, then what does he say? Oh, look at me. I just beat one of the greatest fighters of all time. Therefore, I must be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Yeah, Even though Tyson, if, Tyson, yeah. Tyson is, you know, more than double his age, you know. Yeah. So come on, you know, that's... It's, yeah, it's I think I think what you're saying about it being exhibitions or something like that, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a, a more for uh, emotions and uh, being oh. famous and all that. It's... What's what's the what's the pay per view on this? Is like what six? I heard the pay per view was like sixty nine ninety five or fifty nine ninety five or something like that. So you know they're 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 predicting based on pay per views, based on you know what Paul got when he fought Anderson Silva and Nate Diaz and all those other people. They're thinking it's going to be bigger than this. They're talking it might be what one and a half million, maybe two million pay per views. You know, at fifty or sixty bucks a pop. I mean. You just you just do the numbers there. I mean, we're you know, oh my God, we're at we're, we could be at seventy, eighty million dollars to come rolling in here, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, I, oh, <laughs> economies of scale, people. Yeah, eighty million dollars. You know, we raise to go ahead this, and uh, each one of the fighters gets uh, thirty million, and the promoter gets twenty million, and uh, you know, 
the people selling beer and wine, beer and wine and candy and cigarettes in the aisle, they all get 50, they all get pennies on the dollar. So have a nice life. Oh my God. How do we get to that level, people? How do we get to the level of Jake Paul's? I've seen some of the videos that they were showing when he first came out and how silly he and his brother were acting in their kitchen, pancakes and whatever it is they were doing. And it's like, wow, you got to do whatever you got to do to get some attention. And then he gets some attention. And then the world's your, the, the, the world's your oyster, man. Apparently those guys each make freaking over a hundred million dollars a year a piece or something on YouTube. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, oh, well, it's too late for me to do that. But, uh, Anyway, what else? What else is there to talk about? Talk about that bridge collapsing, I guess. The bridge. You said something yes. before about that the um that the um yeah. So the um in an accident, the cargo ship before. Yeah. So, um, we we know that uh it was earlier today, the twenty sixth of March, that um it was like one thirty a.m. um when that that ship, the ship's name is Dali. D A L I, um, right. and it crashed into the the uh, one of the support beams of the bridge, and then the and, entire and bridge just collapsed. Yeah, and it apparently sent out a mayday distress signal, talking about complete loss of power and obviously complete loss of engine power and yes. you know, rudder control and whatever. So they did going straight. Yeah, the uh, yeah, I'm reading here. The vessel notified MD Department of Transportation. That they had lost control of of the vessel, and the collision right. with the bridge was possible. Um, mm -hmm. So not I mean I don't know about Mayday or anything, but they did they did contact, um, right the Department mm -hmm. of Transportation, and they were like, we lost control, we could crash into it. Um, and so like they had a, a a big blackout on the ship, and it's not uncommon for ships to have like blackouts for. Mo like momentarily mm -hmm. or blackouts right. in maybe certain areas of the ship but what is unusual is for the entire ship just to go completely dark for a very right. long time which is what happened to this it just went completely dark um all power failed and uh, it wasn't coming back and of course this had to happen at where like um on, on course towards the bridge so right because cool. obviously you see the support pillars and they're you know a certain distance apart so obviously their goal is to go this way and it was heading that way and all of a sudden it lost control and they couldn't steer it and then bam it went right into it i mean it's sort of like driving your car oh yeah i'm gonna drive my car okay i'm gonna go this way oh i can't go this way and bam there you go you're right and straight ahead so but didn't you say something about this ship had had some previous yeah yeah it was um can't quite see here um so apparently this ship is about like nine years old and uh hold on where is it and it did say it lost propulsion prior prior to the crash and it did follow emergency protocols by dropping anchor and you and i had talked about that earlier about couldn't it just drop some things and try to so it did apparently. So yeah, it drops anchor, and that's a big, big heavy weight. That thing weighs thousands of pounds, and it's but it still wasn't anchor. enough. Well, it has it a lot enough. of um, has a lot of inertia, all all that weight, and yeah, everything. An anchor probably wouldn't three do much. Fields. So yeah, I mean, who knows how many zillions yeah, of tons and, that thing weighs? Once that yeah. stuff's moving, that's hard to stop, man. It's like a train. You know, you can right. get a train going twenty miles an hour, and it take a freaking thing freaking five. Yeah, miles the heavy, the heavier it is, and the faster it's going, the harder it's going to be to stop. So. With right. how how much stuff was on there, it I mean, yeah, it, it would take a really long time for it to come to a stop. Um, well, it'll come to a lot. Well, it, it it depends. If you hit something, it stops even quicker. Yes. What's this? So, what happened? Um, which is like what is happened. Terrible. I shouldn't have laughed because apparently six people who were doing work on the bridge they were they were they were filling potholes. You know, at one thirty in the morning, obviously getting them filled for the rush hour traffic. And um, you know they they've been they've been missing and they're they're missing and presumed dead. So you know and and I, I like Baltimore. I, I was I was in Baltimore back in 2016 for a week when I was working at the for Stewart Title to do some IT work and they give me some quote unquote training in their systems. But it wasn't really training because I already knew how to do this stuff anyway. But I was out there for a week in Baltimore and uh, you know it was pretty cool. And uh, I, I like Baltimore. I actually thought it was a pretty cool. Uh, Pretty pretty cool city. They had a, a college in there, and then they had LA Fitness was over there, and 
and then I've been to Baltimore, Maryland before that because they have the uh, the guns over there where they and defended the, the United States. I was over there when I was a teenager and stuff. So, yeah, I, I know Baltimore. I've been there. That's at least two, three times I've been there. And um, so as soon as I heard Baltimore, I'm like, oh crap! And, and I, I know that bridge. I've been we've driven across it a couple times. And that's interesting. That's another thing, people. It's is um, it's the Francis Scott Key Bridge, right? And he's the he's the guy who uh, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. And if any of you out there saw the collapse, I posted that on my sports music cards video, you know, YouTube channel. I posted on TikTok and Instagram, you know, the video of it collapsing. And the thing just, I mean, it just went down. I mean, it hit the one support meme and this side went out and this side went out and everything just, the whole thing just, bam. There was at no point where any, any structural load hit another part and that thing was able to hold. So one part hit another part, hit another part, hit another part. And, you know, the, you know, the hip, the, the knee, the knee joint was connected to the hip joint, connecting that, the whole thing just collapsed. Yeah. I mean, it was just a freaking. and now you're just like, how delicate was this thing that, I mean, the whole thing went down. You'd think, okay, you hit one beam, they'd have it engineered somehow where it would be isolated, where the whole damn bridge wouldn't just collapse completely, but the whole thing is just gone. And I yeah. mean, how long is that going to take? And it's it's a, it's a pretty busy port over there on the East Coast, you know, and how long is that going to take to get put back up? And how much yeah, money is it going to Busy bridge, and, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a, now it's a bridge to nowhere. And then yeah. who, who's going to be held responsible? The, the ship, you know, their insurance company, the government going to pay for it. Joe Biden's already out there saying that, you know, the United States is going to be 100% behind them and, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing built and get it built better. And all that, but there's going to be a lot of red tape and a lot of investigation going on before any any rebuilding of any bridge is going to be done. So, so uh, people are going to have to find another way to get across. Oh man, That's nuts. yeah. And um, you said you were in there 2016, and 2016 is um actually when this ship was in another accident. It actually um was in Belgium, and it collided with a shipping pier. Um. Another one, God. Yeah, it um it struck a loading pier made of stone, causing damage to the ship, and then um. It was an investigation was determined that uh it was just a mistake made by the ship's master and pilots, but um that one wasn't nearly as bad as this one, um uh, because that one right. was made of stone and it, it withheld um it withheld better and uh. The ship was the only thing that was really damaged, and then uh, no one was injured or killed or anything. But obviously, this right. one there were um, six people presumed dead. The entire bridge is down, which is going to cause a lot of uh, oh, traffic and uh, that's gonna cost. Be, yeah. And yeah, and then um, pe some people were suspecting that it might be like a terrorism attack. Oh, but yeah, it, it, it seems the first thing everybody jumps to. Yeah. For, yeah. It, it it seems pretty unlikely because like, um, it probably was just an accident. Um, and <clears throat> eight again, like I, like I said earlier, they did notify the Department of Transportation that they could mm. possibly crash into that, and they did take procedures to try and stop themselves. I mean, maybe it's like a a well hidden terrorist attack, but it's kind of like a very weird one. It's like, it's like, I mean, while you, you um. Uh, you hit a bridge with no one on it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I've heard a couple of conspiracy theories talking about it's either terrorism or it's immigrants or it's some combination of immigrant terrorism and, you know, welcome to Biden's America. This didn't happen under Trump, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> People are going to use their own whacked out mentality to go ahead and, and say whatever it is they want to say. So uh, whatever. So what else is the news? We talked about the Tyson thing. We talked about Prime. We talked about the bridge. There was something else we were going to talk about. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. But also, just one thing. Um, the ship, it was... Um, it, it's like nine years old, and it had passed previous ins inspections. But during one in inspection, it was seen that there was a deficiency with its propulsion and auxiliary machinery, um, mm -hmm. like gauges, thermometers, etc., which does sort of correlate to what happened and what failed on boats. Right, right. Um, so, so, I mean, 
I don't maybe maybe this will make it so um, inspections are a bit more strict um, because well, when because you know, well, it, it passed like overall and it there was only mm -hmm. a deficiency it didn't fail the inspection of its like um, auxiliary propulsion or whatever but it it was a deficiency which is like linked to this and so maybe um, there'll be pressure put on whatever uh, companies or governments are inspecting these boats to um, be more strict with these so there's something like this doesn't happen again yeah i mean if it's a deficiency then you know how imminent is that deficiency what's what's the percentage are you supposed to run it 100 percent? but we'll let you only run at 75 percent capacity and anything less than 75 percent capacity is called diminished or deficient and then what's what's the threshold before you have to do actually do something about it can you go down to 60 percent say ah oh, fine 60 percent no problem you can still you can still run you know you'll, you'll get it repaired eventually someday but then you have international ships and they're in international waters and they're going back and forth from one place to another. Who's keeping track of all this stuff? You know, every day in these, these international ports, I mean, you're having hundreds you know, of ships come in, you know, with thousands of containers, tens of thousands of containers, you know, worth of goods coming, coming and going back and forth and all the bills of lading, you know, manifests, all this stuff. And I mean... Who, who's nobody's obviously nobody's keeping track of it all because nobody's keeping track of it all things like this wouldn't happen there'd be a deficiency and then would go ahead and get rectified and then before it was you know made to be uh, seaworthy not you know but obviously it was still deemed to be seaworthy and uh, here we go boom thing loses propulsion and it crashes into it and that's you know like we said they're, they're they're gonna they're gonna find out that this wasn't the first time and it was a deficiency and you know i mean heads are gonna roll of course you know heads are gonna roll over this and you know, it's a big deal, but, you know, none of that's going to bring back the uh, the six people who died. I mean, I, I can't imagine being up there working at one o'clock in the morning, you know, patching potholes because waiting, you know, for the rush hour, rush hour to happen. And next thing you know, you're freaking, you find yourself freaking falling probably, who knows how far, I mean, how high was that thing at probably, probably 150 feet or something, you know, 200 feet. I mean, you're falling and even if you do survive the fall, you're, there you are floating in the drink. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and the bridge is like all on top of you and everything. So yeah, could, and then yeah. Fall. yeah, right, exactly. They could be in there. You see where the bridge fall. All, I, I, hey, I survived a 150 foot drop here. I'm in the water. I know how to swim. I'm doing the dog paddle. Oh, here's a nice piece of, here's a nice steel beam that should be in the head. Bong. And yeah, there you go. I mean, yeah. they, they, they really had, they had no chance between the fall, between being in the water, being in the dark, and having no way to get out, and then the bridge falling on top of you. Yeah, you're screwed. You know, you're completely screwed. And what about those people? That, that's, and, and, that, and that's what, that's what nobody really thinks about when they're thinking about, these deficiencies and these problems that are found is what's going to happen if something happens. You know, they 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 they're supposed to do a worst case scenario. Oh, worst case scenario, this this bridge crashes into a port, and this is what happens. And can you foresee something like this? And they'll all say, oh, well, we could never foresee something like this happening. So it's you know it's it's God's will or whatever, and I'll make up some cockamamie excuse. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. But anyway, what can you do? Things like this ha do happen from time to time in the land that is the land of Lincoln. No, we're not the land of Lincoln. That would be Illinois. This is the land of the United States. So, blah, blah, blah. This was exciting. This, I'm sure this podcast will generate us at least 100 million views here and lots of money, too. Ha, ha. Yeah. But it's something to put out there. You have it recorded in OBS, so no BS. Correct. All right, boy. So I guess save this file in some format.